Hello everyone! So today I wanted to make a video talking about the 10 things I wish I knew before I started at UCSC. And I thought this video would be really helpful if you are going to be an incoming first year or transfer student to UC Santa Cruz. These are just some sort of like tips and just helpful information about both the school and the town and just navigating college in general. So without further ado, let's get into the video. The first thing that I wish I knew before starting was that you should choose the college that you're going to be affiliating yourself with wisely. Um, so if you don't go to UCSC, you're probably very confused about what that means. So Santa Cruz has a 10 college system, which is confusing because UC Santa Cruz is a college. But within that, there are 10 residential colleges. Each one has their own theme and um, each one offers housing on campus. Um, and typically first year students live on campus. You actually select the college that you want to affiliate yourself with um, during the UC application process, which I know was pretty long time ago for most of y'all. Hey y'all, so I was actually just looking at the school website and it looks like now you actually rank your top choices for housing when you SIR or you like commit to Santa Cruz. So it's not actually when you fill out the UC app in general. So um, I talk about that in the video, but that I guess isn't true anymore. So you can disregard that. So this is something that might be a little bit too late for those of you who are going to be starting um, at Santa Cruz this fall, but something for those of you in the future who are interested in UCSC is to do research into each of those 10 colleges. Their information is really accessible on the school website. Um, and the main reason to do so is that each college has its own theme and that correlates with some kind of academic curriculum. Usually it's just one class that you take your first quarter as a freshman and it's a writing class. Um, the college that I am a part of is um, environment and society focused, but there's ones about social justice, there's art focused colleges, um, so it really depends on what you're interested in. Um, it doesn't have to have anything to do with your major. I would recommend looking at both the theme and the location when choosing your college. Additionally, because of the themes of the different colleges, there can be a lot of different opportunities that each college presents to you. So usually there's different internships or ways to get involved at every single college, and those vary a lot depending on the theme. So if you're more interested in maybe like a social justice type of volunteer work or internship, then you would want to look at colleges that have that as their theme. Whereas if you were interested in something that was more STEM focused or environmentally focused, you would want to look at those types of colleges. So the second thing that I wish I knew before starting at UCSC was that it's really important to go on campus tours and multiple and different types of campus tours. I was fortunate enough to live fairly close to Santa Cruz so that it was easy for me to visit. Obviously, if I had been flying out or driving from farther away, I know that this isn't as possible, but I was able to tour the school before, like as a prospective student, before I even knew I would be going there. I was able to get a little bit familiarized with like the general layout of the campus. Once you are at Santa Cruz, but before your classes officially start, there's also many more opportunities to get a more extensive tour. The tour that I went on, and this was during welcome week, which is the week that you have as a first year before your classes officially start, um, was a find your classes tour. And this is something that Rachel Carson did, but I am assuming that it's probably done at most of the other colleges as well. Um, but the find your classes tour was exactly what it sounds like. I was able to go with older students and like a group of other first years and we had our class schedules and literally we're just like, we have class in um, PBSI and then they would take us to those classrooms or like whatever the case. If you're starting as a first year student or a transfer student at Santa Cruz, please, 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 please listen to this portion of the video. All the upperclassmen or like continuing students will thank you and they'll think you're the coolest person, maybe not, but they will respect you if you listen to the advice that I provide in this next section because oh, oh my god. god people do not know how to use public transportation something that is super awesome about UCSC is that your student ID card which you will get when you uh, move in um, allows you to ride any city bus um, for free and then additionally you also um, can ride the loop buses which I mentioned earlier that just run through campus also for free you don't need to show your ID for those but basically you have access 
to public transportation for free. It's really not for free, it is like part of your tuition, but it's not something that you have to pay additionally for. You automatically have to pay for it, so might as well use it. So the number one thing, and this is, I think should go without saying, but it astounds me how many people don't think to do this, is please, please, please thank the bus driver as you're getting off the bus. Um, it's just a really nice thing to do, it goes without saying, and they're so nice, like both the city bus drivers and the loop bus drivers are just the sweetest people, and if I had to drive in a large circle all day, I would go insane, so it's really cool that these people do that. Something I should have mentioned earlier too, so you have loop buses, which are usually white, and they run in loops through the Santa Cruz campus, and they stop at different stops on the campus, but they never leave campus. So there are different types. There's an upper campus bus, which actually does not go in a loop. Um, and then there's like some, I don't know, there's like variations. You will figure it out, but anything that is a white bus that has like a slug on it, you don't have to show your ID card to get on, those do not leave campus, so you'll be fine. You can't really get too screwed if you get on one of those and you don't need to because the worst that happens is you get from one side of campus to the other. The other type of bus are the city buses. So the city or the Santa Cruz metro buses are usually like a blue color. Um, and these buses will actually have a number, which is like the bus line or bus route that they follow. So that's what differentiates them from the loop buses. Um, something really important to note is that if you are getting onto a city bus, you always have to get on at the front set of doors, the ones that are near the driver, and you have to show them your student ID because that's like your like bus ticket or whatever. Uh, but if you're getting on a loop bus, you can get on either the front or the back door. You don't need to show your ID. It's like a university bus. Probably the most important piece of advice, and this goes for both city buses and um, the loop buses is that if the bus is really crowded, meaning that all the seats are pretty much filled up, move to the back if there is space. All right, so now I wanna talk more specifically about the buses that you can use to get off campus, which are the Santa Cruz Metro buses. So this is the stuff that even if you're pretty familiar with transportation, I feel like it's really nice to know. There's a fly or a moth, I don't know, please go away. When you get your ID, there's a little sticker on it and um, it'll say fall 2019, yes, fall 2019. I was like, what year are we in? I don't really know. Um, and that is like showing that your card is up to date and every quarter you're supposed to get a new sticker. I know a lot of people who never got their sticker changed. I don't think it's a huge deal, but every so often you will get a bus driver who checks and you don't want to be without that. But in terms of the bus lines, so there are several bus lines that run through UCSC. Um, so any of the ones that you see on campus that are city buses will take you um, off campus. Those same bus number lines, if you catch them off campus, will take you back up to campus. So those bus lines include the 10, the 15, the 16, the 19, the 20, and the 22. And I'm going to get to the 20 and the 22 in a second because those bus routes are a little bit different, but I'm going to talk about the other ones first. So a general rule for all of them is that the um, even numbered bus lines, they run east to west. So you have the east side of campus, which is like the Oprah's gym side, and then the west side of campus, which is the Rachel Carson, Oaks, and Porter side. Um, just to simplify things. So even numbers go east to west, odd number buses go west to east. If you are trying to get to downtown Santa Cruz, which is where a lot of students are trying to get, um, you can use every single bus except for the 22 and the 20D um, to go downtown. And I'll explain those buses in just a second. But every other bus will take you downtown. If you are trying to get to beaches, the 20, the 22, or the 19 are the best for that. If you're trying to get anywhere on the west side, the 20 or 22 is also good for that. So as I mentioned, every single bus will take you downtown except for two that run through campus, the 20D and the 22. So the 22 is a bus for students who are going to the Coastal Science Campus. Something I would say is if you are not trying to get to the Coastal Science Campus or to somewhere else along that bus route, do not take the 22, even if it's just through campus for a bit. In general, try to not take city buses when you're just going somewhere on campus, just wait for a loop or a walk because they can get really crowded. But the 22 only comes once an hour and it is the only way for students to get to the Coastal Science Campus who don't have a car and it's not exactly close. It's a couple miles from the main campus um, and you don't wanna take away someone's spot on the bus who really needs it. So avoid the 22 if you don't need it. Hey y'all, so I just wanted to add on really quickly to what I was saying. So um, in addition to the 22, actually a lot of the buses that go off campus come um, pretty infrequently so especially if it's sort of like the near the end of the day and people are trying to go home really try to avoid taking city buses unless you need to um, so that you don't 
um, prevent someone who really needs a spot on the bus from getting that spot. Um, the 20D, however, follows the exact same route as the 20 bus, which I told you will take you downtown, but the 20D just randomly stops like three or four stops before downtown and just is like, okay, okay everybody off. off. There's also a bus called the 20S, There's and there's just normal 20s too. The 20S will take you to Safeway, but it will also go downtown, so that one is fine as well. In addition to the buses um, that go through campus and take you downtown and elsewhere, um, once you are at the Santa Cruz Metro Station, which is sort of like the end of the line for all of those buses that I previously mentioned, except for the 22 and except for the 20. D. But anyway, um, if you do ride the bus, all the other buses to the end of the line, you will end up at the Santa Cruz Metro Station where you have to get off and it's like a transit center. Um, but at the Metro Station, you can connect with other buses. So one of these and one that I would take kind of frequently is the 17 bus. This will take you over Highway 17, which basically takes you to San Jose and sort of the Bay Area. So if you're from there, it can be actually a really easy way to get home. But also if you're just interested in checking that area out, it costs $7 one way. So it's pretty inexpensive and it's pretty fast so that's a nice option um, it also connects you to like Caltrain and it's really close to the San Jose Airport so I know if people are trying to get a flight or a train that's also a really good option also you can take buses to um, the Capitola Mall which is the closest target to Santa Cruz um, and that bus is like the 69W or something very weird I don't know for sure but um, it's completely free with your student ID. So you can go to the Capitola area for free. I think you can go all the way to Watsonville on that bus. And I really just recommend, you know, use Google Maps, familiarize yourself with the schedule. There is definitely different schedules between weekdays and weekends and holidays and all of that. Finally, I just want to say, obviously this is a ton of information and I just wanted to put it out there because I feel like it can be really tricky and intimidating if you haven't really used public transportation that much before. If it makes any of y'all feel better, I didn't really use it at all, at least buses, until um, I came to Santa Cruz. And while there is always the option to you know, use Uber or Lyft or Zipcar, I just think that the fact that you have access to a free or like built into your tuition um, service is really cool. And um, I personally don't have a ton of money to spend on Uber and Lyft and all of that, so this was a really good option. So I apologize if that was more than you ever wanted to know about the bus system, but I just think that is some very valuable information that hopefully is helpful to you when you start. So the next thing that I wish I knew was how important it is to take advantage of the academic resources that you have available to you. So something that I had never heard of before coming to Santa Cruz was what's called MSI, which I think stands for Modified Student Instruction. People will refer to it as MSI, but basically it is a student sort of tutoring and like group learning um, service that's completely free um, and it's usually offered for certain classes. I don't know if this is more of a STEM department kind of service or if it also is in the humanities. If you go to Santa Cruz and know, like feel free to comment below, but um, I think it might be a little bit more for STEM students, but it's completely free. It usually is like a once a week or as many times a week as you want sort of like tutoring session thing um, and it's run by students who have taken the class that you are currently in so like for chem 1a which is like an intro chem class I used it and you can go over homework you can just go over class concepts another thing that I mentioned in my previous video was the importance of office hours um, that is kind of similar to MSI where you get this small group learning experience but office hours are actually run by the professor of whatever class you're taking and they can provide the best advice obviously they're the professor and learning techniques they will give you study tips, they will go over stuff that is confusing from the course, and it's a really good way to get to know your professor, which can be really helpful for rec letters and internships and anything down the road. And you also will have TAs for um, each of your classes, especially if it's a large lecture class, and TAs are a really good way to get additional help. Oftentimes they have a section that is mandatory, but even if it's not mandatory, I recommend checking it out. You might find that you don't find the section that helpful. I actually have found that to be the case for some of my classes, but don't just discount it right away. Definitely go. You can also try out different TAs sometimes if your class is more flexible. Um, and they also might off offer office hours if you find that your professor is really intimidating. I feel like for me, like my first quarter, the math class I took, the professor just terrified me, but the TA I had was amazing. He was so, so nice. And so I would go to his office hours 
um, and he was still really really helpful just in general there's a lot more resources and like people available to you than I think that there really is in high school it's really easy to succeed if you use those resources and don't be intimidated intimidated by them or feel like oh I don't need a tutor or like whatever like they're there to help you because classes are difficult and it can be really difficult to adjust to the quarter system and just college in general <laughs> So kind of building off of that, I also wanted to talk about a little bit of what I wish I knew in terms of studying when I came in. So the main thing is studying with a small group or at least one other person I feel like is extremely helpful. Um, for me, it helps me to know if I'm on track and it's just more fun and I'm more motivated to study with people than by myself. I also really, really love Quizlet. I feel like most people know what Quizlet is. Obviously, this is not sponsored, but um, I just love Quizlet, especially if it's just a class where you just need to memorize stuff. Quizlet is great. It reduces the waste of flashcards. And I always feel the need to kind of like talk out loud when I do flashcards, which can be a very awkward thing to do um, at school, especially like in a dorm with two other people. But if you use Quizlet, you can use the learn, I think, yeah, like the learn function. And that allows you to type in answers and stuff like that. So you um, don't need to talk out loud, but it still commits it to muscle memory because you're writing it down. And it's actually more like what you would do on the test. The final sort of studying piece of advice that I would say for Santa Cruz is that, and this is probably true everywhere, I feel like some of this information is a little bit more general, but review sessions will save you. Um, TAs or usually actually professors will um, offer a like one or two review sessions leading up to a midterm or a final where they just kind of go over everything that you need to know for that test and you can ask them usually pretty much anything and if it's a TA running it sometimes they might tell you what are the questions that are literally gonna be asked on the test so go to review sessions they help so much and both teachers and TAs will usually reward students who go to those things by giving them a pretty good advantage on the test in terms of what to expect that they might not really go over that much in just the general lectures in terms of where to study this is a little bit more specific to Santa Cruz but we have kind of the two main libraries which are which are McHenry library and the SNE library but I also like studying off campus as well there's lots of different coffee shops there's Lulu's coffee roasters um, T zone which is a boba place which might people might think it's weird to study there but I do that with my friends um, Starbucks on mission there's tons of different places um, and they usually have actually better hours than our libraries do neither of those two larger libraries are 24-hour libraries and they usually close at like midnight even during finals week so if you want to study later and you don't want to like just be alone in your apartment or dorm or whatever, um, I recommend some places off campus as well. I believe there's a 24 hour library at Stevenson, but I am not 100% sure on that. And that's kind of far from like where I was on campus anyway. So there you go. And that kind of brings me into the sixth thing, I think six, I don't know. Um, the sixth thing that I wish I knew before starting at UCSC is that hours for both our libraries and our dining halls can be kind of terrible. Um, and I'm not trying to complain, I want to just first sort of preface, preface, preface this, I'm an educated student. Are you sure about that? Uh, by saying that I understand that the reason that these places have restricted hours is because it costs money to staff um, these different places and we don't have unlimited funds obviously um, so I'm not trying to say that like they need to extend their hours but um, when you are unfamiliar with the hours and you're expecting them to be open longer because you you know know friends at other schools that have 24-hour libraries or whatever the case um, it can be kind of surprising so I just wanted to tell you all up front that these are the hours and sometimes it's not great um, so starting actually with the uh, dining halls, um, so the rules with our dining halls are kind of weird. Um, it's basically Sunday through Thursday, they're open from like 6.30 a.m. to I think 11 p.m., which honestly I feel like is pretty good. Um, and then Friday through Saturday, which I guess is just two days, and I guess Sunday morning they're opening at 8 a.m., and then, um, but they close at 8 p.m., I believe. I don't want to say that wrong, but they close significantly earlier. Another thing is that the... Merrill Crown and the Porter Kresge dining halls are just completely closed on the weekend so you have to go to another college to eat and as a first year student living in the dorm you're required to have a meal plan and you don't really have access to a kitchen so the dining halls are where you will get your food unless you're buying it you know somewhere like off campus or at a cafe or something um, so it's important to know like what you'll have access to as I mentioned um, previously 
both McHenry and Essany are not 24 hour libraries. And I believe on Fridays and Saturdays, at least McHenry closes like pretty early. It closes at like seven or 7.30, which yes, most people are probably like not in the library on a Friday or Saturday night. So just be aware of that. Obviously there's lots of other places to go as I previously mentioned, but it just can be kind of annoying. So the next thing I think is kind of nice to know before starting is that the dining hall food is pretty average. So I'm not gonna like tell you guys that the dining hall food is amazing because it's not, but it also is not terrible and they do a really good job of incorporating vegan and vegetarian options and the food is definitely not bad. You usually have access to fresh greens and generally there's always like something that you can eat even if that's like pizza, which you know isn't the most exciting option, but um, it's not the worst. Also, a lot of students work in the dining halls and it is the way that they are able to pay for their school, which is a really cool option. So I am not trying to blast the dining halls for not having five star amazing meals, um, but it is something that you do have to pay for and it is kind of expensive as a first, if you're living in the dorms, you have to get a meal plan and you know, it's just something to be aware of. So as I said, if you are a first year student, you don't really have a choice. You have to at least get a five day meal plan. And I recommend just getting the seven day meal plan because if you don't really have access to a kitchen, it's not like you can just magically cook your food on the weekend. Um, but if you are living in the apartments um, or off campus, I would recommend not purchasing any meal plan and cooking for yourself. It is significantly cheaper, um, unless you get some kind of financial aid that covers your meals. I would really, really recommend cooking your own food. You can buy what are called like slug club meals and that's just a card that you load with like prepaid meals um, and you can buy like 10 and then it's like oh like I'm studying for finals and don't have time to make a meal this week or this day then it's like nice and you can use it um, and you can go into a dining home but you don't have to do like the 55 meal day plan which is a lot of meals to have to use if you don't really like the dining hall food that much and it's not that cheap. That brings me to my next point, and that is that non-dining hall food in Santa Cruz and on campus is pretty great. So starting with the on campus, there are a lot of different cafes on campus, and as a first year, you get flexi dollars, which are basically more things that seem like they're free, but you actually do pay for them, but you might as well use them. Um, but flexi dollars are accepted at most of the cafes on campus, so you can get like a coffee or an acai bowl, which I highly recommend. Um, basically just like other meals and snacks and stuff like that that you can kind of get for free but not really for free. Hey so I just realized I didn't actually explain what flexi dollars are which is kind of important to the point I was trying to make. Um, so flexi dollars um, you get 50 of them per quarter when you get a meal plan and again like I mentioned in the video you pay for them as part of that meal plan so they're not like this free thing but basically they're like I guess like sort of like university bucks or something like you could call it so that you can use them at a cafe on campus um, as if you were paying with cash um, but you're paying with these flexi dollars and they're just on your ID card so you actually hand them your ID card and they swipe that. So my favorite places on campus, I really like the Stevenson Cafe, um, the um, Amazon Juice Bowls in McHenry which is where you can get acai bowls. Um, the, oh my god, I'm blanking, the Owl's Nest, which is in Kresge, and then Oaks Cafe. The food in town, there are some really, really, really good places. Once again, all of this stuff is like very much my opinion. I think Santa Cruz has pretty decent Mexican food. Um, some of my places are Los Pericos, um, El Palomar, Taqueria Vallarta, which is on Mission, and then Taqueria Santa Cruz. All these places, honestly, that's like most of the Mexican food places in the main part of Santa Cruz, but they're all like pretty decent and pretty affordable, so I definitely recommend trying them out. I like all of them. Lots of people have their like favorite, but I genuinely like all four of the places that I just said. The Boba in Santa Cruz is not that great. T-Zone, which is on Mission, I would say is the best place in Santa Cruz. Um, you can get the most like variety of options and um, you know, it's not bad and it's pretty inexpensive. Um, people like Quickly, but I think Quickly is trash, but that's just my opinion. Um, and then there is um, Pacific Thai, which has kind of like a boba, um, you can buy boba sort of like in the back of the Thai restaurant. That's also a good restaurant if you like Thai food. Um, but um, they have Thai Tea Tuesdays, where the Thai tea is like half off, so if you really like Thai iced tea. 
I do recommend Pacific Thai. Some Asian food restaurants that I really like are Betty's Noodles. So it's kind of, both of the restaurants that I'm going to mention are more Asian fusion. It's like several different types of Asian food. It's not like a specific like Vietnamese or Thai or anything like that. Um, but Betty's Noodles has lots of different noodle dishes and it's located um, on uh, Pacific, which is like downtown, right in front of the metro station, which is the weirdest. It's kind of built into the metro station, which I will admit, I completely judged and thought was the weirdest place to have a restaurant. And I was like, that's not clean, that's weird. But it's very, very good and fairly inexpensive for like a big like bowl of like pho or like pad thai or anything like that. Another place that I really like, but you can really only get there, um, you can get there by bus, but it's a pretty long bus ride. Or if you have a car, is Charlie Hong Kong. It's over on Soquel. Once again, more of like an Asian fusion, like different Asian food places, but they have a lot of vegan, organic um, food options. And then um, two other places that I've heard really good things about but have not tried are the Saturn Cafe, which is downtown, and they have a ton of vegetarian, or like everything is vegetarian, I think. Um, and then I also have heard great things about the Santa Cruz Diner. Something else that I wish I knew before starting at Santa Cruz is that there are a lot of stores that at home I consider to be like pretty common, easy to get to stores that are actually either not in Santa Cruz at all or that are a little bit harder to get to without like a car. So this includes kind of hardware stores like Home Depot and Lowe's are pretty close to where I live back home. Neither of those are in Santa Cruz. Um, there is a smaller hardware store um, by the Safeway on Mission, but if you need like more specific stuff, I don't know if you ever really would, but just know that they don't have a lot of hardware stores. Additionally, they don't have a Michaels. Um, the closest one is I guess technically in um, San Jose area. Um, there's also one on the way to Monterey in I think Seaside? Question mark? I don't know. Um, so if you need craft supplies, I feel like this does come up a little bit more for projects, especially if you are like an art student or taking an art class. Um, it might be nice to uh, have art supplies. That said, there are um, smaller art stores, art supply stores, both downtown and on SoCal. Um, but once again, like they might not have as wide of a selection or as cheap of a selection as Michael's does. Additionally, there's not a huge mall really close to Santa Cruz. Capitola has sort of a mall, but it's honestly pretty sparse in terms of clothing, star clothing stores. There is a Forever 21 and an Urban Outfitters downtown, but that's it in terms of like major and a gap in terms of like major clothing stores and then as I mentioned the closest Target is in Capitola. In terms of grocery stores though there is a Trader Joe's downtown as well as one in Capitola and then there is a Safeway on Mission. Those are sort of the main grocery stores that most students shop at and additionally there is a Costco in Santa Cruz. It is kind of in a weird location. It's pretty much unless you have a car or a friend with a car you can't really get to it especially if you're buying a bunch of stuff. Um, but yes, there is one. It's actually pretty close to campus. It's kind of just off of Highway 1 as you drive off of the 17. So the final point that I wanted to leave you all with is that you are in a beautiful, beautiful location. Um, both the school itself and the town of Santa Cruz I think are just amazing. You have the redwood forests, you have the beach, and just sort of the beach town feel. And um, especially when you are a first year, you have, I would say, a little bit more time on your hands than maybe later down the road. But no matter what, always try and explore your surroundings both on and off campus. You're also fairly close to Monterey. It's about an hour away and Monterey is beautiful. You can snorkel, scuba dive, kayak, like all of those things. Um, hiking is really nice. Davenport, a lot closer is if you go up Highway 1, so the opposite direction, like towards north, towards San Francisco, is very pretty as well. There's hiking in Henry Cowell off of Highway 9. Um, there's caves and farms on campus, hiking on campus, it's really neat. Natural Bridges, I would say, is the closest and best, the best sort of close beach to Santa Cruz. You can get there on the 20 or the 22. There's a beach, you can swim, boogie board, go tide pooling. The one of the coolest things about the campus is that it is a UC school, but it has all of this natural beauty around it. Um, it's very different than I would say the other UCs in that respect and a lot of other colleges in general. So really make the most um, of, the, of your surroundings. Um, there's a lot to do for fun um, that I think people don't really 
realize is available to them. All right, y'all, so thank you so much for sitting through this video. I know it is quite long, but if you are going to be starting at UCSC soon, hopefully this information is helpful and will give you kind of a leg up and just some insight into how to be successful and how to enjoy your time at UCSC. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.